hoopers. So feel free to fall out of the chair backwards. You hoopers. Know? I feel okay. like uh, this is the, the Charlize uh, Theron episode of Between Two Ferns. Well, that's what we're getting at. That's inspiration. We haven't gotten full <laughs> approval from the top. You know what I mean? So Bob really doesn't know you're doing this? Um, no, he doesn't. Yeah. But I'm 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 confident that when C sees the finished product, he's going to be very happy with what we got. Okay. Ready? And when when is that going to be? When is he when is well, he going to see the finished product? He should be. Well, I've already. This is we're on episode two, so I'm hoping sometime be, between now and episode three, we get full approval for it. Okay. You know, so that's why you're here, Raul. You're supposed to help us. <laughs> okay. All right. So here we are between. Dos palmas, or what do you think this is? You think this is una palma? Well, um, it's not a fern, so we can we can go with uh, with uh, miniature palms. If, miniature if palms, you, and you think we're know. between them or we're outside of them? We're kind of bookends to the miniature palms. So. Okay, I like bookends. I like bookends. Okay, so Raul, Raul Garcia, tell us how do you and I know each other? Well. <laughs> We met a long time ago That's right. uh, when uh, you were making a move to a larger law firm. That's correct. And uh, you were in our litigation department. That's right. That's right. And I casually referred to you as my work father. That right? is true. That I'm is not true. calling you old. I'm not calling you old. Well, not directly. Not directly. You know, okay. it's, it's implied. And do you remember us, you know, and when I say us, I mean the entire litigation team here in the Miami office would run into your office, not necessarily in tears, but with whatever issue or problem that we had, and we expected our work father <laughs> to help us resolve it, even if it was mid-deposition. <laughs> not, not much has changed <laughs> since then. And I still run in there. <laughs> yes, you do. So I had the opportunity. I started here approximately six years ago, going on seven, and I had the opportunity to watch you. So I always say I learned from the best. You taught me a lot about litigation and um, probably mostly everything I know about litigation. Thank you. Uh, uh, that's the longevity. I figure if you do something long enough, mm -hmm. yeah. You get pretty you good at it. You better get pretty good at it. Yeah, yeah. All right. So let's talk about, we talked about my R Law uh, journey, a little bit about your R Law journey. How long have you been with us? I've been with Rubenstein almost 10 years. Uh, I graduated uh, law school in 89. I worked for a large downtown firm for four years until uh, they dissolved. And then I ran my own practice for over 20 years. I love it, I love it. And now you're one of our senior partners. Yes. And also the mentor, we talked about that a little bit, uh, to all of our junior litigators and mid-level litigators and all the entire litigation department. Um, so with that said, I'm not calling you a dinosaur, okay? But you, in your long career, have seen tort reform before. Yes. Um, and we know, it's no secret, <laughs> the cat's out of the bag. We've had some pretty significant changes to um, the laws that uh, guide our practice as of late. <laughs> yes, uh, Pat Riley uh, is famous for a quote that says that the only constant thing in life is change, and that applies to the legal profession as well. So, but we've been able to weather the storm before, and we'll be fine this time around as well. And also, not only have we been able to weather the storm as a profession, but I think that coming from the powerhouse that is Rubenstein Law, we're going to help our fellow colleagues in the community kind of weather the storm as well. Absolutely. And provide the best resources that we possibly can. Um, I know that we will probably be hosting a lot of webinars and uh, hopefully some CLEs to help the colleagues um, that don't have the resources that we do kind of understand what the new implications are. Which is the benefit of being a big firm, which we are now, uh, you know, with over 50 lawyers. And uh, our litigation department has also become highly specialized and we try everything from med mal to slip and falls and autos and negligent security cases. Um, so yes, lots of resources uh, with the firm backing. So we're able to assist. And we're actually filming between Dos Palmas here in our mock courtroom. My favorite room of the entire uh, firm. 
Uh, a lot of money, a lot of resources went into this, and uh, it's where we practice, where we bring our clients in to do uh, mock examinations, and uh, it's our favorite place. And here, the for example, if a smaller firm or a lawyer sends us a case, they can actually sit in and watch us practice what will happen live in trial. Sure, we do dry runs, uh, which is very helpful, especially for the clients. Okay. Because they get to experience a live cross-examination, and uh, yes, they can watch, and we also do focus groups here, and we can have uh, folks participate remotely. We can watch what's going on in here from other conference rooms. So lots of tools. So let's talk about how the resources turn into big hits. I like to call this section big hits. Big verdicts. Well, big verdicts uh, start out with uh, the case itself mm -hmm. and the clients. And there always has to be something about the case that a jury can focus on. And I don't want to say that can piss off a jury, but something that a jury can relate to and some improper conduct that rubs people the wrong way. And that's usually the key to big verdicts and big decisions in the cases that we try. Okay, and Raul has had quite a few big hits um, um, while he was here at Rubenstein Law. So let's talk a little bit about some, you know, when I first started, you were freshly off a $3 million verdict on what typically wouldn't necessarily be a $3 million verdict. And can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, mm -hmm. uh, that was actually a $4.9 million okay. verdict. <laughs> I love to be corrected. I love to be corrected when I am under the number. <laughs> that's a, that's a $4.9 million verdict. Uh, we had a client who slipped and fell at a supermarket in an area where the supermarket knew that they were having some leaks from their coolers and they put these strips down mm -hmm. that are water absorbent and they never removed the coolers, they never blocked off the area and uh, they knew about it for weeks and in comes our client and falls in. It was a life-changing 30 seconds. Uh, he had two back surgeries, a cervical surgery and a lower back surgery. Uh, he had a lower back fusion. That did not provide relief. And then he had a spinal cord stimulator uh, implanted. And uh, that's when we tried the case. And we got a good jury and a very good result. And a jury did not buy the defenses in that case. Okay. So that was then, and we'll talk about this is now, and you recently had a multi-million dollar uh, verdict as well, uh, to the tune of $20 million. <laughs> Am I right on that, or is it higher than that? No, it's $20 million. <laughs> $20 million verdict. Tell us a little bit about that case. Well, um, we represented a wonderful uh, young man who was 23 when we tried the case, but the incident occurred when he was 15. And uh, he was minding his own business with two friends walking home from school when a wall collapsed on his leg and causing horrific injuries. He almost lost the leg, almost lost his life. He was in the hospital for 30 days. Uh, he underwent um, a fasciotomy, which is a horrible procedure where they cut open the leg and it stays open to allow the inflammation to subside. And the four compartments of his lower leg were open. And he stared down at that from a hospital bed for over 10 days. And they also, he also had multiple fractures, so they immobilized his leg using external fixation, which is visible rods that go into the leg, so he stared at that for another 20 days. Then he underwent a procedure to close the leg and skin grafts were used. And then after that, he underwent another procedure to take those external rods, remove them, and put internal hardware in his leg 
and his ankle. So serious, serious injuries with a lot of uh, treatment and probably a lot of residual issues for yes. that gentleman. Yes, they were. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had uh, a good team at trial and we had a, a lady <laughs> by the name of Lisa Lopez. Do you remember, do you know her? I Lisa know her Lopez. pretty well. I assisted a little bit. I'm not going to yeah, take any credit she, for it, I, but I assisted a little bit in the I jury selection. I heard she films a, a, a little show in our, in our courtroom. But yes, um, you assisted us in uh, jury selection, and uh, we obviously got a great jury, and she bought into, uh, they bought into our um, theme of the case and our version of everything that happened in this incident, which was very avoidable mm -hmm. and you know we tried the case against uh, six lawyers wow. there were four lawyers for one law firm including an appellate attorney and two lawyers for another law firm representing uh, both defendants so it was hotly contested uh, and it went about two weeks and uh, we got a wonderful verdict for this young I man. I think that uh, yourself and one of the other partners in our firm, Miranda, uh, did a heck of a job on that. I had the opportunity to watch you all once the jury was um, picked and um, I have to say it's uh, top-notch legal work and um, we're very proud as a firm for the job that you all did. Yeah, I'm very happy um, for the young man. It's yes. a life-changing for him and he's looking at a future filled with knee replacements and recovery and uh, so. Well you guys did a great job for him. And Thank you. Something that we're very proud of as a firm. Thank you. So um, with that said we're going to lighten the mood a little bit. Raul we're going to go to our lightning round. Lightning round. Lightning okay. round right. I'm going to shoot off a couple questions. You just spit, spit fire okay. Ready? All right. We'll, we'll see how we do. Football or baseball? Football. Okay, so you used to be a quarterback, right? That's right. All right. Many, our, many years ago. He's our uh, certified Al Bundy over here. This is for the, for the, for the younger versions. Al Bundy was <laughs> well, a quarterback. Yeah, you might want to explain that. <laughs> All right, so, okay, remote or in person? In person. Okay. Okay, so actually today we're having our first referral network event, a wine and cheese tasting here at our beautiful Miami office. So... Wine or beer? Uh, wine. Okay. All right. All right. Raul, thank you so much for joining us between Dos Palmas. You're okay. Very welcome. My I pleasure. really appreciate your time. I know that you're busy, so I'm going to let you get back to uh, knocking out those insurance companies. Will do. Will do. <laughs>